Okay, I realise that the title says great, um, but I don't think 2020 is really a year for hyperbole, so I'm going to retitle this, Why This Is A Good Year To Be A Videographer. With everything that's gone on this year, um, especially being in our second lockdown, why is this still a good year to be a videographer? Simply, everybody wants everything online. We've all seen this year business meetings, live streaming presentations, virtual this, that and the other. Now I was speaking to uh, the owners of two separate marketing businesses recently. And I remember at the beginning of lockdown one, one of them did mention that they were making a big shift into video because they believed that print was dying. So he, he dipped his toes in before because we'd done a few jobs together and luckily he hired me to uh, film a, a few school projects which quickly turned into quite a lot of school projects and with each of those projects was multiple edits so throughout the lockdown up till now we've done quite a bit of work together on these schools and a few other things as well. I'd only ever shoot one possibly two schools per year but because schools are becoming accustomed to this sort of uh, uh, output for the websites or trying to promote themselves, we're pretty much guaranteed that we're gonna be shooting the same schools next year. And what we've noticed is the thing is with uh, the schools in the same trusts or in the same areas, is that once they see one school having a good video, they want one as well. So there's a bit of a shift uh, for schools wanting these type of things. So what sort of work have we been doing throughout this year? We've shot a number of factory tour sites where usually, let's say, uh, one particular business would um, invite uh, a future client to come in or an existing client to come in and have a, a walk around to see the machines and the staff. Um, obviously that couldn't happen over COVID, so this was a, a good option where everybody could do it from home. Live streaming, whether it's um, classes or um, musical events. There is actually a lot of work for videographers out there. Um, I was surprised when I started looking. Marketing companies or marketing departments uh, for certain businesses um, have been putting a lot of posts out recently asking for freelance videographers. And this is a good way to sort of supplement um, monies coming in. And that's how I got this particular post I'm gonna talk about right now. So a couple of months ago, I was tagged in a post on Facebook saying that um, uh, the Harris Museum, which is a museum close to me, were looking for a freelance videographer for 12 months to take care of their sort of online content. And I thought, that's perfect, that'll suit me just fine. I noticed the post had been shared quite a few times, so I thought, right, I'm gonna have some competition for this. And I thought, how am I gonna stick out um, over other videographers or photographers that might have gone for the job? So when I clicked on the link, there was a list of specifications saying this and the other. Final one being, please provide your CV and examples of your work. Now, I haven't had a CV uh, for maybe 15 years, so I thought, okay, what do I fill in here? They're not going to be interested in what English result I got at school. So I thought, how am I going to stick out from the crowd? So I put together a five minute video CV. Basically, me talking to camera, going through all the sorts of details that they mentioned, um, and there was quite a few of them, to be honest, and sent it off. Never heard anything for a while and then I received a call saying I got the job. Apparently there's a bit of a committee and they all kept coming back. I think they had quite a few inquiries and they all kept coming back to the fact that I was the only one that sent a CV this way. I tried to incorporate as much as I could into the CV so it included a little bit of, of my personality, uh, my background, uh, so examples of the work and it did do the job because the person who contacted me, Rebecca, said they didn't feel that they had to meet me. They, they felt comfortable with everything that they saw in the video. And they even circled it around the offices so that all the staff members could get to know me even though they hadn't met me. Does that make sense? Shortly after this, out of curiosity, I did uh, look on the Total Jobs or Indeed websites and there were still um, a lot of companies asking for videographers. And I thought, do I apply for this? But, but no. I thought, I have enough work for now. I mean, to be honest, um, the work that I'm getting at the moment, uh, it's, I've had to actually bring on other videographers. I mean, this month, um, my second videographer, I've passed nearly two grand's worth of work onto him. The biggest difference when moving from wedding events to sort of commercial or promotional uh, videography is 
Um, you are dealing with marketing departments, you are dealing with a lot of different voices and opinions, so you have to be a bit more thicker skinned because there will be a lot of uh, feedback, I suppose is the best way to describe it. So, the, you know, it would just be for little things, um, colours, even fonts. In one company, you know, two people might have different opinions on fonts even though you've already overlaid it onto the video. Just as an example, a video that I shot for a restaurant, they asked me if I could remove the glasses from the bartender who was making a cocktail, um, if I could Photoshop it out. Um, and I just explained, uh, no, uh, it'd just be easy to film it again. It's also good to have a team behind you when you're doing these sort of things because um, unlike weddings where you can get booked two years in advance, these might be the day before or that day or even a week before. So you may not be available, so you might need, to, as I mentioned before, to pass it on to a team member. It's also good to have uh, people from different fields like graphic designers or photographers because they come in handy for, for larger projects. And this is relevant for today's job, uh, as I'm off to uh, the Harris Museum to record uh, a musical performance, um, which they're selling online. And there's a lot of gear needed for this one, so I've got three to four cameras filming. Uh, we've got all the lights as well, but I don't want to take care of the sound, so I brought uh, Dan, who's our sound engineer, to come and uh, record that and then send me a final mix. So we've got professional sound as well as the video funerals i've seen quite a few posts from people who were starting to live well film or live stream these i mean it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea but um even after the pandemic you know when people can go to funerals there's still going to be those who can't go who maybe are in foreign countries who would have liked to have been at the service would like to see it so whether you want to do it or not there is going to be a lot of uh, work out there for these type of things because they are it, it this service is going to be sort of a norm if you have a drone license and a drone, not much needs to be said there. You, there's a ton of stuff you can do, uh, whether it's construction, incorporating it into other projects that you might be doing. Property and real estate, again, I've seen quite a few people who started doing this now, and it's a good way, uh, especially uh, during the corona time, that people can view these homes from the living room. Recently, we shot and edited quite a number of um, instructional videos for a company that make doors. Today we are in the mobile office uh, because we're in Middlesbrough, staying over for two days, um, filming a company that make doors and door fittings. As a contrast to the music performances, which required um, multiple cameras and uh, lighting and the sound engineer, this one was literally um, this camera, this lens and a tripod for two days to create eight videos for, um, I think it was, it's just online tutorials or something like that. We filmed quite a bit for local councils because we found that the, they have um, quite a few projects that they want to get online, whether it's with local museums or parks. Uh, just to keep their sort of members up to date with what's happening in the area. So for that reason, I believe it has been a good year for videography. And I think there's going to be, uh, this is going to mould the way we sort of work in next year and onwards, really. So what have you been shooting this year? You know, how has it changed you? What, what new projects have you been doing? Are you excited by this change? Let me know in the comments below. Happy shooting.